Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is a series of videos around business value. They've been recorded in conjunction with Tor from Advisory Services at VMware, and they came about from a discussion about the differences in the way that technical people view business value and business people view business value. And it started off with a discussion about the discussions I was having with people and the different tools that are used in advisory services to map it out for executives. So the conversation started with a presentation that I had, which was about all the different things that IT departments have to do in order to deliver applications and services to end users. So we had all the different things across the top, which we broke into different categories, such as managing the building, managing power cooling and connectivity, servers, racks and hypervisors, VMs and operating systems. And then finally, when we get to dependencies, services and applications. And it's only when we get to that bit at the end that I felt we were delivering any kind of business value whatsoever. It was only when we got a, a service or an application to an end user that we actually delivered some value. And it was all about moving things from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. This presentation was specifically about VMC on AWS or VMware Managed Cloud on Amazon Web Services, about it removing some of those things on the left so that we were left with just VMs, operating systems, uh, dependencies, services, and applications. And then we go from VMs to introducing things like containers, Kubernetes, cloud native applications, and trying to move things as far to the right as we can so that the difference between uh, what IT does at the bottom and the difference between what delivers value is as narrow as possible. So we're trying to focus on, on just doing things that deliver business value. Um, I was quite pleased with this presentation and Tor said, yep, yeah, it's great, except doesn't actually demonstrate any business value. Um, unless you actually had a user after the application and that user doing something of value to the business, there is still no business value there, which started a discussion with myself and Tor about um, well, tell me more about the tools that advisory services use, at which point we moved on to things like um, the value chain was one of the things that we looked at, uh, the value pyramid, and then the value wheel. Um, so my discussions with Tor from there were, okay, so you've got all these different tools. And my first reaction was, are they not just the same thing done with three different shapes? You know, is it not just the same process, but you've just got a different way of showing it? And this was Tor's response to uh, whether or not these are actually different things or whether they're actually different approaches. The value chain, the priority pyramid, and the value wheel are the same thing. N no, they're not. So they all talk about customer value, but they really support each other in different phases of the sales process. And they, they also communicate different levels of what the customer is trying to do or what we're trying to do with the customer. Um, so my next question after that was, okay, so if these really are different things, is there actually um, a logical order um, uh, that you're meant to do them in? So, you know, can you just pick one or do you have to do them all in a pretty much, you know, pretty much in a sequence or is there an order that you should follow when you're using them? So, so that is a really good question because there are sort of two orders and I'm sort of split between them. Uh, the logical order is to do the priority pyramid first because it talks about the strategy. So if you sit in the office and you're doing account planning, then it's really good to understand what are the goals of this customer. If it, if it was a supermarket, it could be, we wish to expand into three more countries because then we can increase sales. That would be a strategic uh, goal of it. Um, I do find that the value chain is better for starting conversations with the customer where you basically show them, you understand how they do business and then you can ask them what challenges do you have or which opportunities do you have or which bottlenecks do you have and how can we help as VMware? So my next questions after that were, okay, if we've got all these tools and there's a there's a logical order in using them, why is it that we see here so much about the value wheel? And to me, the value wheel is a really clever way of presenting back to the customer that we have understood what they're trying to do. And then in one page, we can explain to them, we can help you do this, this, and this, and that will be the value for you if you do it with us. Yeah. 
And anybody who's worked with Tor will know it doesn't take him very long before he just wants to jump on a whiteboard and show you how to do something and work through the process. So the very next thing we did was we did a worked example on a whiteboard of mapping out a value chain. Yes, Jason, L let me answer your question with a drawing because if I am to do account planning or if I am to go talk to a customer, what I really like to do is to talk to them about how their business runs. And I like to start out with this bendy line because that sort of symbolizes the world. This is, this is where we at, dear Mr. Customer, this is your world. Every customer we talk to, they have some kind of central administration, some kind of headquarters. And, and that's where administration takes place. And then they always have someone consuming whatever it is they produce. And it doesn't really matter if we're talking about a manufacturer or a supermarket or a government entity. They always have administration. They always have someone consuming what they create. So I like to talk to the customers and say, okay, so we know that in this part, you have your creation of whatever service you, you, you are producing. And out here, you have the distribution of, of your uh, service. And then the last bit here is consumption. And it also doesn't matter if consumption is um, consumer or it's business to business based, you can always divide whoever you're talking to into these three sections. So if I stick with the supermarket, you know, you're a consumer. That means you go to a store to uh, to buy your goods. And, and these goods, they somehow got to the store, which is through some kind of distribution system, which, uh, you know, it can be trucks and warehouses and, and what have you. And the administration somewhere, they have decided how all this should work. Uh, but there's also other things happening in, in the supermarket. You know, there's always purchasing that means there's always raw materials there's always someone creating it it be a farmer growing carrots or, or or another farmer growing beef or you know you buy tin tin beans from from mexico there's always someone buying stuff which is procurement and if you're a bank it's the same thing. You just have the other places where you get money and the open banking system and what have you. It's always, uh, there's always something happening over here in the creation of, of the goods. Then many supermarkets or retail chains, they have uh, factories where they even, even they package uh, the goods or, or, or they, uh, create something like you know if, if you go to tesco's they'll have tv dinners or ready meals or, or whatever and you know so they buy the goods they create the goods and they distribute the goods and they sell the goods and then you have someone consuming them and then we as vmware we can look at them and say dear mr customer this is how we see your business and then we can start sharing stories and we say you know other supermarkets they're really focused on improving the way that they communicate with their customers. That means that they need some kind of mobile app so that you can communicate better with your customers. You also have stores where you say, well, the stores are actually placing orders with, with the headquarters. So they say, well, we need more carrots or whatever it might be. So, you know, there, there is a, a chance that you could digitalize what is happening in, in, in the ordering system. And you can then also digitalize the way that you, uh, that you go out and you distribute things. And, and you can also start helping them going, well, the packaging plant, they are also running some kind of computers monitoring how the packaging systems are working and the way you do procurement. How about if you could take your phone and stand in front of the carrot salesman and say, oh, I have a mobile procurement system and I can say, oh, you want one pound for a ton of carrots? Well, your neighbor just wants 95 cents. Uh, so you can stand out there and you, you can, um, and, and then you can uh, negotiate with your supplier on the spot if you had some kind of mobile procurement system. So if we look at this, we can say, well, you have a project of digitalizing. You have a project here saying better loyalty 
you could say, well, you want to digitalize here so that the trucks go to the right place. And so that means you can reduce waste and, and, and reduce uh, diesel consumption because you're going to the right places. Digitalizing the stores coming in that are the orders coming in, that means less errors, which also means uh, less people typing and, and reducing the waste uh, of, of the distribution. The packaging, these factories, they always have downtime. So you can improve stability. So if, if, if you, so a typical thing is that the, the systems monitoring the packaging machine, they are running on an old Windows XP platform. And I'm not kidding you, they run on an old Windows XP platform and they need new hardware every once in a while. We could virtualize that. We have customers, they've virtualized that system that is running the whole factory and they have better uptime and less wasted, you know, if all your ice cream machines break down, then the ice cream melts and, and you lose the ice cream. So increasing the stability of the packaging factory is actually something with a huge financial impact. Or out here, you can reduce the cost of actually uh, buying goods from your suppliers. So if I grab the gold color here and I say, so how about if we digitalize that whole shopping or the whole procurement experience? You know, you might save 1% of the money that you spend on buying goods. For a supermarket, this is huge. What if you reduce the downtime here and you every year, you would maybe save 10 million euros worth of wasted goods because the ice cream doesn't melt or the carrots won't go bad in a warehouse or you, whatever it is you're handling. Uh, and, and that stability is an overall helper to increase the, uh, the finances or the, uh, the health of the supermarket. The less errors over here and the less Key, double keying of orders because you digitalize. Maybe you can save uh, five percent of 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 your FTEs, so your employees. That doesn't mean I want to get rid of the employees because all the supermarkets, all the stores, all the co companies that I talk to, nobody is looking to lay off people. They're looking to use their employees better because that will give them a competitive advantage. So that's really also a thing that we can go in and say, how about if we digitalize that whole distribution system and we, we reduce wasted food because, you know, the truck's sitting in the sun, the ice cream is melting, or he takes all the carrots to a store that already had a lot of carrots. So what do we do then? Dump them in a, in a field or take them somewhere else, you know? And, and, and so there is a lot of waste if we don't control the distribution right. What if we could reduce food waste here by 20% by being more digital in the way that we distribute things? And then I was working on a customer on the loyalty app. And then we think about, okay, customer loyalty app, you know, I, I pick it up and I get my personalized coupons. And what's that worth actually? So they looked at it and they said, well, you know, every consumer that does not have an app, they typically spend 45 euros with us per week. But those that do have an app, they spend 85 euros per week. So if we move just a few customers onto having the app, the benefit for the supermarket would be 42 million euros increased revenue per year or protection against uh, your competitors or what it might be. And we look at all this and we say, yeah, Mr. Supermarket, I understand if we had all this in place, this is actually a lot of money towards your financial statement so that you would be a better supermarket. So what could we do as VMware to help this? Well, that's sort of interesting too, because out here, he would need a work anywhere or end user computing or workspace one uh, kind of solution so that we could do the procurement on the spot. This here stability thing of, of, of the manufacturing systems, it's so simple. It's what we do best. It's basically a P2V, it's physical to virtual conversion of, of, of a number of machines so that the factories would run better. The whole digitalization here means, you know, if we had some kind of cloud solution and we had some APIs and we maybe we had VRA automation thing, we could basically help them digitalize and make everything in the headquarters run better. Maybe it would be reduced downtime. Uh, there's a lot of things where we could actually help 
the supermarket improve their internal efficiencies. So we look at the trucks, it's the same thing, right? We want to have some kind of Workspace ONE or Work Anywhere solution uh, in order for the truck drivers to better manage or handle what they're doing when they're distributing stuff. And then back to the loyalty app, which had a lot of money in it, right? Well, how do we help them produce better loyalty apps? Well, the app would rely very much on the development team. And the development team would rely very much on some kind of automated infrastructure. So that basically means if they say, we really need to improve our customer loyalty app, we would say, well, we can help you. We have Pivotal, we have Tansu, we could go to the IT infrastructure team and create a private cloud, or we could help you do some kind of multi-cloud development so that your development team would become more effective in the way that they create stuff and release things faster. And let's do that one-to-one -one marketing. So that's sort of, that's a short, an short answer, Jason. How does it work with the value chain and how do we use it with the customers? This would pretty much be it. I would start out with the black drawing here going, dear Mr. Customer, this is how we see you're, you're working. And then I would take the blue bits here and say, this is what I heard from your competitors or, or colleagues in other countries. They're trying to do this. And then I would just ask them, how does that look for you? Are you focusing on the same things? And they would say, oh yeah, we have an issue here or we have an issue here. And then you can ask them, how much would it mean to you if you had that thing resolved? And that's where we put the gold numbers in here and say, okay, so if we fix this for you, you could improve your finances by 30 million euros. Well, we'll do it for you for 5 million. How does that sound? So that was the value chain. Uh, the next video in the series is going to be about the value pyramid.